Hey trendsetters, today I'm coming to you from Richland, Georgia. It's a small little town that I don't know a whole lot about. I'll provide some facts and details in the video description below. But it's not too far from Columbus, Georgia, mostly south. So let's do a quick tour of the town and try and capture some of the highlights. There be the Stuart Webster Journal, established 1850. And it used to be a bank building, the People's Bank. It's a very quiet day today. I don't know if a whole lot happens nowadays in Richland, Georgia, but despite that, we'll poke around anyway. Well, here we go. Here's the old railway station. It looks like it's been restored. And it's been, I'm not sure, reconstituted or something. Maybe the tourism office or... No, oh, there you go, City Hall. It's now City Hall. I have no idea when the railway quit operations through this little town. There is still some railway track hanging around, but it's uh, no longer in use. There's another very interesting building right there. I'm not sure what its purpose was at some point in time. Maybe for storing, it's a good shared warehouse. I don't know. There's a lot of agricultural in this area. I believe mostly peanut production and so on. But it was a pretty busy town at one point in time. They used to have free railway tracks passing through town. You can see some of the agricultural stuff here. Here's a view of Main Street. Let's get another look at the railway station. back side of the railway station. Right there, Railway Nuts is a former track inspection rig made by Fairmont. I would love to have that and go ride the rails and have some fun. Especially uh, like one of those pump cars. So if anyone's watching and you have access to something like that, drop me a message in the comments. I would love to experience that and shoot a video and somehow involve a gravel bike and more for the railway nuts out there like myself notice this crossover you don't see those too often so obviously track went that direction at some point in time and down there obviously been pulled up some time ago let's continue poking around there's something you don't see too often sirens for cities incorporated outdoor warning systems it's a siren for uh, tornado alerts and so on this is a little railway building of some kind I'm not sure what it was used for. Storing something, I guess. Inside the little building. Who knows? Might have been for employees. They might have collected mail there or something. They got little slots. Quite a few wasps make home in this little structure at the moment. And here you can see the former crossing. It's been pulled up. Once upon a time, the boom gates were there. They've been unceremoniously cut off. This is interesting. Rexall Drugs and an old uh, golf, sorry, golf dealership with some very cool cars inside. So this has been restored, this old gas station. Car nuts will recognise how cool this vehicle is here. It's a Plymouth GTX. Looks like someone might be restoring at some point. It's got beautiful Magnum 500 wheels with red wall tyres. That is a badass car. For the trendsetters watching uh, this video, I'm a bit of a car nut as well. I quite like old muscle cars. There we have the Richmond Masonic Temple, Smith Lodge number 85. And it's a furniture store, Smith's Furniture and Appliance. Your hometown furniture store. Hello, here we go, here's something interesting. Looks like Richland is home to the Pig Fest. So, second weekend in November, Richland, Georgia. 
And this might be a great place to take a cover photograph for the video. Look at that building right there. I'll check it out momentarily as well. There's another look for you. Pig Fest, the second weekend in November here in Richland, Georgia. And there's my steed for today, the Ripple CGR SL with SRAM's ETAP Force Wire Drivetrain. Beautiful Zip 303S wheels. Both those, well, all three items are under review right now. Ultimately on the Gravel Cyclist website and YouTube channel. And there we are, folks. The post office for Richland, Georgia. Zip code 31825. Gravel Road here on the outskirts of town is once upon a time with the railway line ran. You can see there's a, well, former evidence of a signal mount probably. And over there, another track ran that way. That was probably a little loading dock or something like that. This big old warehouse is obviously in better days. It's all knackered and caved in, etc. And here is the town cemetery by the look of things. These graves are from the French family. Someone died in 1901 and this person died in 1897. Here's a little about the cemetery and the first settler. Richland is also home to Richland Rum Company. Sorry, Richland Distilling Company. I don't believe they own quite a few of the buildings here in the downtown area. A lot of evidence of their distilling operation here. There you go, Richland Distilling Company. Entrance in the block, which you saw a moment ago. Here's what I was trying to find. The historic placard. Historic Richland first settled in 1827. You can read the rest for yourself. Okay, I think it's time to roll and get on with our ride today. Not a long ride, I'm pretty tapped out from yesterday. I think it's about uh, 45 miles. I'm rolling through the city park to get to the start of my route. And weather conditions are perfect. Low 70s, overcast skies. I think the max is about 75 Fahrenheit, so another great day to ride. It's about time the cooler temperatures finally came to the southeast of the United States. Been baking this year. So many beautiful historic homes here in the southeast. Taking the very first potentially dodgy road, which crosses the old uh, railway line here. Off to the right is a water tower of sorts, promoting Richland Rum which you saw a moment ago in the video. Richland Rum, shop, distillery tours and tastings. Highway out of Richland, you can see the old Robo line ran that way somewhere. This be the next road and uh, obviously you can tell it's a mixed surface. <laughs> now there's no signs indicating it's private property. Hopefully it's not. Pretty nice so far. Fingers crossed, everything remains calm. I suspect this is some kind of farm access road. It looks like it's been pretty well used. Again, I don't know if it's private. This is sometimes why I don't always post my routes. Don't need a ton of people riding some of these potentially dodgy roads and getting in trouble. It's bad enough that I might get in trouble. If you enjoy a smooth course, this is definitely not the course for you, it's very bumpy. <laughs> this pine plantation is pretty much all around me. Well this route's a bit off because I just ran into some really friendly folks who have been cutting the woods here, nice blokes, and they advised me politely that the path I was taking is completely wooded. So that's not ideal obviously. So I'm gonna just cut back and take a plan B and it does turn out this is private land they were really nice and uh, you always should be polite because it is their land after all and you're visiting or potentially trespassing so always do the right thing and be a steward for this type of cycling as well that's pretty important definitely a bummer this part of the route didn't pan out because it would have been really badass to cut through and continue on towards my route. So, 
like I mentioned a moment ago, Plan B is about to be figured out. This is also another reason why I really like the Garmin navigation device, sort of the touch screen. I can zoom in, zoom out, move around the map, all with my fingertips. Here you go, railway fans. The abandoned railway line goodness continues. It's a little bit overgrown, you could say. But I need to redo this route because it's far from perfect. Needs some twigs. Had to do a few backtracks already. As you saw, I was going through some hunting land. And uh, part of that course, there was more hunting land. So obviously I want to avoid that. It's very difficult to tell sometimes. I do a lot of research with satellite maps and sometimes county maps, but you don't always get the answer. Often it's just go out and see how it goes. Oh, this is a nice road. Giddy up. Finally some success. Well, I had success before. But this would have been interesting. We're definitely into clay road territory. Look at my tires. It rained quite a bit a few days ago, so there's a decent amount of standing water and mud around the place. Woof. Right down there is a railway cutting running parallel to the road I'm still riding. There's my bike laying on the ground. Don't worry folks, it's safely laid down. A couple of tents parked over there in the woods. Yeah, they might be abandoned, they look a bit sketcho. And I remind you, we're not riding on the planet Mars today. This is Western, or well, Southwestern Georgia. Is this lovely or what? Pine plantations on that side of the road, fields, left side of the road, and lovely tree lined uh, canopy. I'm not sure what trees these are. Don't think they're live oaks. Ugh. Anyway, all of you budding botanists, horticulturalists, feel free to chime in. So, folks, a bit of sludge rama taking the middle line, and now I have. Panorama Gravel King tyres, which are not the best for riding in mud, they kind of collect mud. Thankfully they have the mud version. I reviewed both of those tyres. Look at that, got my bloody shoes all dirty. I have to wipe that off, don't I? Love those shoes. Okay, back to the uh, regular programming. Here we are, passing by an abandoned barn or oh, some structure of some kind it's been there a very long time oh no it's actually a house it was a house at one point in time mud all over the bloody tires no worries no packing up someone might ask sir do you have dog poo on your shoe no it's just uh georgia red clay that's kind of liquefied by the way it'd be very very bad if someone were to come along this road and potentially run over my bicycle no one's around. That's okay. You can see that flashing light for miles. Let's have a look inside this old house. Well, someone's taking the storing tires inside the house. There's the old fireplace. I wonder how long ago this was uh, abandoned. I'd say a long time ago. At some point in time, this entire structure will collapse and you'll just see the chimney standing around the place like I see so often in uh, these parts of the, the woods Alabama, Georgia, Florida and so on this is a pretty tasty little road I have to say I just sincerely hope that it keeps becoming a road and doesn't become private property I've already had enough of that for one day <laughs> oh yeah look at this this is fantastic Timberland abounds in this neck of the woods. Been some clearing over there and so on. Hog Chockey Creek. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Maybe not. Anyway, it's down there somewhere. What role? Garmin says, hey John mate, you've got a climb coming up. It's a bit steep at the bottom too. I think I'm on the outskirts of Lumpkin, Georgia. A town I have ridden through before. 
or started a ride from before. But I never really poked around to give you a first person perspective with this handheld camera. We are indeed into Lumpkin. Hello doggy. Hi. It's okay mate. There's the Sheriff office. The Sheriff of Stewart County. And here we are rolling into Lumpkin, Georgia officially. What is that beautiful building? And here I've entered the main square, the courthouse in the center. So let's do a lap around town, around the main square I should say. Now the last time I was here, there wasn't a lot happening. Unfortunately it seems that life has up and left Lumpkin for the most part. Here's an old gas station no longer in service. There is the water tower for the city of Lumpkin. This gas station has been out of business for quite some time. Pumps are still there. Here we go folks, the bastion of American society, one of many. The United States Post Office for Lumpkin, Georgia, zip code 31815. And a really beautiful historic home directly across the road. The Lumpkin, Georgia Methodist Church. I'm not a religious bloke, but I can certainly appreciate a lot of the interesting architecture of churches I see in my travels. There's a cool old cabin right there. I imagine that was an early home here in Lumpkin. There's no signage really to indicate what it's about. Hang on, maybe there is. No, there's not. But right next door is the Beddingfield Inn, which I have parked my car out in front of at least. You can read all about it right there. Let's film the Beddingfield Inn, 1836. I should definitely stay there at some point in the future. Assuming it's open for business. Oh, it certainly is. Bedfield Inn and the Stewart County Historic Commission reside there. You know, I really thought that a lot of my friends had abandoned me, but here they are on the wall here in Lumpkin, Georgia. And also Providence Canyon is nearby, and I'll link the video that I shot previously in this area in the description below. Lumpkin Drugstore, that is new. That was not open last time I was here. There you go, there's a building for sale, 27 grand. Could be a good deal, might need a bit of work. And there's another knackered gasoline station. Check out how much the gas was a couple of years ago. 334, bit of a hose job. Here be the Lumpkin Emergency Services. This is all conveniently located around the town square. There's the City of Lumpkin Police Department and the City Hall, established in 1830. Let's check out the courthouse in the centre of town. Stewart County Courthouse, it's a beautiful building. There you go, all you need to know. This property has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places by the United States Department of the Interior. And there's a bunch of COVID notices and so on there. I would love to have a look inside that building for sure. Here's a view from the courthouse steps and there you can see the water tower beyond all you water tower fans. These skies are looking dodgy folks as well. There is a chance of rain today. I can feel a little bit of light rain right now. Uh, I don't really want to get sludged on today. I've been sludged on a few times lately. There's the Lumpkin Cemetery. Behind me, bye bye Lumpkin. Pressing on. Back on to another sweet 
very red clay mixed surface road. Deer tracks dug into the soft soil. This road is super hard packed. The rain has also fallen recently, as I mentioned before. It's very fast rolling, but also very bumpy at the same time. There's a ton of ruts worn in from all the water drainage to each side of the road. So again, if you want a smooth ride, this is not the road for you. Is this road going to be dodgy? Potentially. But it does seem to be following a power line, so that usually means there's an access road the entire length. Hopefully that stands to be the case. This is always the fun times. When you go exploring off the beaten track and plan your own routes. I just recalled, I believe, I have ridden this road in the past. The last time I was riding around this neck of the woods. A lot of these roads look the same, but this does look strangely familiar. Well, I got that wrong. I have not ridden this road before. It's a pretty lovely road though, I'll say that. It's also very steep. Look at the root structures, how they wander down into the steep wall here, this clay wall. It's amazing how these trees are so stable, yet potentially a very tenuous environment. You can see with this tree in particular, which is quite sizable, how well it's adapted. Well, this road was cut out who knows how long ago. Maybe it didn't adapt. Maybe it was forced to adapt. Same with this tree next door to it. This is walking cam back up the hill to collect my bike and continue with my journey. Ahead is another example of how the best laid plans sometimes go astray. This is forest land and it is, I believe, hunting season. I'm not jumping that fence. Got a plan B, so this is the second or third reroute. This route really needs some work, obviously. Plan D, I guess. I'm well into plan D and this view should give you an idea of the topography of this area. Many ups and many downs. And some lovely cattle over there. Between the last scene and this scene you can see it's been raining. And that doesn't ever bode well for filming so I'll do my best. I was kind of hoping for a dry ride today, obviously that didn't happen. Anyway, it could be worse. Either side of this paved road is a cotton field. There there they're not in full bloom yet i've forgotten today's date but it's late september <laughs> anyway by the end of october and perhaps into early november they should be blooming and being harvested and so on one thing i don't like about some areas of the country here in the united states is how they cut grooves into these well they're not bike lanes are they but this is a major road it's designed to keep drivers and straying into the weeds obviously but you have to ride this stuff for a little while it's bumpy even on a gravel bike but it kind of forces you unfortunately really close to traffic which is not optimal considering this road speed limit is 60 mile an hour okay well thank if that's over now this road has been cut as well I'm into another county Thankfully, there's some semblance of a lane to ride in. See the rail bit on the right? Totally rideable. You see, I'm risking my life here on a major highway. So I don't have much of a gap to ride on. A bit of focus here, not crash. Flat paved road, I know it very well, and it really sucks to ride a bike on. Anyway, I'm back onto a gravel road that's going to bridge me across to my start town of Richland, Georgia. Riding another potentially dodgy road here. Looked all well and good on the map. It's one of those days where I've had to reroute several times. Weather's a bit suspect. But, those points aside, it's still a great ride. I just hope this road meets up with my planned route. Now, uh, this is going into hunting land again. Oh, bloody hell. Well, I've only got 1.2 k's to ride. I think I'm going to do it. I'm sick and tired of riding that crazy ass 
paved road back there with cars whizzing by in 65 mile an hour even though everyone was very nice it gave me plenty of room hunting land if you see a tower overlooking that meadow and that meadow right there I'm not sticking around I keep riding down this trail here there's another hunting tower right there it's quite bumpy and muddy and boggy I think I've only got about half a kilometre to ride. Inside a pine plantation. Hello again. Very close to the start town of Richland, Georgia. I've been riding pavement for a little while now cannot obviously transform these roads into dirt and gravel but despite that fact it's a lovely road and here we are back into the lovely town of Richland Georgia part of the trash by the city limit sign and that about wraps up today's video folks thanks for tagging along especially the parts where I wandered got lost found myself and then got lost over and over again Regardless, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel. And don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they appear on the channel. I'll see you in the next video.